Welcome to the Monday Brain Dump. This week we're doing Kasagatami and Kazuri Kasagatami, which is scarf hold and broken scarf hold. They look like headlock type positions that we can move into from top of side control. My students and my training partners know this is one of my go-to attack positions from top of side control. And from it, we have a number of submissions and submission chains, where one submission leads right into another, and the defense of one only gets the other player in deeper trouble for a second. So let's jump right in. I'm hoping by the end of this week and by the end of this class that you have a couple or many new submissions that you can be going for from the top position. Let's jump in. For this week, I did create a grappling dummy. I think it's gonna be the best way for you to see these moves and understand what I'm doing, rather than imagining where my opponent's arm or neck are in space. So uh, this is my grappling dummy I made. Uh, you guys can do this too. All I did was roll up a couple of towels that go from arm to arm, and I put a pillow uh, inside of a hoodie, forward and backward. That gave me this grappling dummy right here. It's an upper body grappling dummy, and this is what I'm gonna use for these techniques. First, let me just talk about the difference between Kesagatami and Kazuri Kesagatami. Kesagatami is a scarf hold position. The Japanese name uh, is used in judo frequently. And this is a control position where I have the head and the arm of my opponent. And maybe I'm holding my leg. This gives me a nice tight grip here. I have a wide base and I can lean my weight back on my person. It's a very hard position to endure. It's a very hard position to escape. It's one of the reasons that we like to go to this position, hard to escape, hard to endure, all the uh, advantages are mine on top, okay? Now, this scarf hold position has disadvantages as well as advantages, and because of its disadvantages, including what is essentially for my partner an underhook under the back arm and a possible backdoor escape to my back, for that reason, I think more commonly in jiu-jitsu, you will see guys using Kazuri Kasagatami, which is a broken scarf hold, and the break is, it's not just the head and the arm, there's sort of more torso and the far shoulder in the mix. But with this underhook on the far shoulder, I have the underhook on the back side. And so now I can attack the arm and the face of the person here, but they don't have an underhook to be getting out the back door. It's not as easy to just bump and move me. And this is for that, those reasons, probably the preferred position when you see most jujitsu people attacking from Kesakatami or Kazuri Kesakatami. But this week I want to talk about submissions from both. Let's start with Kazuri Kesagatami. From Kazuri Kesagatami, or the broken scarf hold, my opponent is probably going to be tucking their arms, trying to stay safe here, okay? It's going to be my job to make sure that one thing, first of all, does not happen, and that is that they get this elbow to the mat. If he gets this elbow to the mat, it's going to be much harder for me to pick this arm up because back muscles, this person using their back muscles to keep their elbow on the ground, is going to be much harder for me to pull this up. It's going to make it much harder for me to pull this up and get it off the ground where I can attack it. Okay? So I do need to keep their elbow off the ground. So to do that, I can manually hold their elbow as I switch into this position, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, or I can bug the neck and a lot of times the arm will come up to defend. And then this is the space I want to occupy. I want to put my knee against their shoulder blade underneath. Now when they try to put their elbow on the ground, the ground is my leg. And they can no longer protect their arm by getting it back to the ground. Okay? By not being able to get their elbow on the ground, it's harder for them to turn in and defend uh, the submissions that I will be launching. So number one, be under their elbow if you can at all help it. And the way that we can get there in part comes from how we move into this position, which is if I'm in side mount and my person is protecting here, that when I slide in, I try to jam my leg underneath, okay? Or I'm, again, bugging the neck so that the arm comes up to defend. He bring, brings it up, and that's when I switch and I put this underneath. Now, too late. Can't get that elbow back, and now it's time for me to attack. The first attack that we'll do from Kazuri Kesagatami is a bent arm lock. And this bent arm lock starts this way. Their elbow is off the ground, they can't get it back. So they're probably hugging their arm to their chest to keep it safe. No one's gonna be just sticking it up like this, right? So he's probably trying to stay safe like this. And people are strong there. I can hold my arm to my chest and make it very difficult for someone to just 
uh, just pull it off my chest. So we won't just be able to pull it off the chest. But one thing that we can try and do is use the leverage on our side to, to peel it off. So to peel it off, I'm going to do this. Not use my strength. This would be my strength. This is me using my core to bend at the waist and my arm to push. My tricep in particular. So instead I'm going to do this. I'm just going to make a connection to the wrist and I'm going to lean away until my arm is straight. And when my arm is straight, now when I lean in, I'm using all the leverage of that structure of my arm to push his arm out. So that's how we're going to peel the wrist out, okay? So I'm going to put, make a connection to the wrist. It can be a C-grip, actually. You can actually C-grip the wrist in this case, lean away, and then use that straight arm to bend their arm. Now, you can already see they're in Americana territory. And the way that I finish in Americana here is different because I'm going to be using my legs, okay? So having peeled the arm out, I'm going to bring my leg over it, okay? And I'm going to take the wrist and I'm going to put it not just at my calf, but up in my knee pit, okay? So the arm is here, stiff arm and lean. I lift my leg up and I put this as deep under my knee pit as I can. Now, to finish this, I'm going to close this leg space. I don't want them to punch this arm straight. So one of the ways I can stop it is to put my leg inside here. So you can figure four. That's one way I have learned this technique. But you can also just put your leg behind. This is actually possibly more efficient in terms of blocking their ability to straighten their arm. Because here, there's nothing really stopping them uh, straightening their arm. It's just the downward pressure of a figure four that keeps their arm trapped in there now. Whereas if I can just block it with my leg, that's actually very effective as well. So with this in here, I'm going to do this movement now. I'm going to bring my knee to the floor and my hips up, and you can see what this does to the shoulder. It does something most of us don't do comfortably, and that's uh, get into this Americana shoulder lock. The so last time with the bent arm lock. Hold the wrist, C-grip. They're probably defending the neck. Get a grip of it. Lean away and use the structure of your stiff arm, your straightened arm, to bring it out to here. Pick your leg up, put the wrist inside the knee pit, and now cross your legs like this, okay? This foot is a post on the floor that prevents them from straightening, okay? With that established, I can lift my hips up and bring my knee down and bring my knee down the mat alongside them as necessary. You won't have to do very, most people I put in this, you don't have to do very much at all. It's this and they tap, okay? Some people are very flexible and you may have to drag the knee down under the arm because they can turn their arm over. But that's the bent arm lock here from, Kes Kes uh, from Kazuri Kesagatani. Now let's look at the straight arm lock from Kazuri Kesagatami. The straight arm lock is going to be a result of a defense to the bent arm lock. I'm going to C grip the wrist and peel it out, but seeing the danger of keeping their arm bent, they straighten it out. Maybe before I get my other leg to block, they get their arm straight. That's okay. I still have a submission. I still have my grip on their wrist. Uh, they've just extended. So now I'm going to step over their arm. Okay. Now. I'm going to step over their arm, draw my heel back, and I'm going to move this leg, which is under their shoulder, down so it's under their elbow. And I'm going to bring this knee down here, I'm trapping their hand if I can in this sort of knee pit here. And I'm going to do uh, opposite motions with my knees here to hy hyperextend the arm. This is going to be a straight arm lock here. You can see that this knee fits into this space. So that's what I need. I need to be able to crush down into a space. I can't bring my knees together because that's just a pinch. I want my knee to be able to close down into the space under this leg. So that's one. Right. I was here. They straighten. Now, if my, if my legs are such that my knees would touch, I need to stagger them more. Put this inner thigh on the wrist. Slide this knee down to the elbow. And I'm going to be able to apply pressure down here and up here to hyperextend the arm. But you're going to get a compensation. When you do this, the person's going to lift up unless you keep them down. So I'm going to put my hand right on the shoulder and then I'm going down with this leg, up with this leg, and I'm pushing with my arm. I'm pushing with my hand on their shoulder so that they don't, when I do this, so they don't compensate, which will, now it won't be a submission. Keep them down. 
this knee goes down into the space underneath this leg. This leg goes up, just rolling up off my sole, of my, uh, a knife edge of my foot. And we've got our straight arm lock. So one more time, from the bent arm lock entry, I hold the wrist, lean away, stiff arm. My person knows what's up. They know that they're gonna get their arm caught in here if they allow it to happen, so they straighten. No problem, step over. And now, this inner thigh on the wrist, this inner thigh on the elbow, and my hand to the shoulder to prevent compensation. This knee goes to the floor, this knee goes to the ceiling, and I push down on the shoulder. And I will get a straight arm lock here from Kazuri Kasagatami. The third move in the chain off the bent arm lock entry is a mounted triangle entry, and I'll show you what I mean. This whole little chain of three moves started from a bent arm lock entry. I leaned away, stiff arm. Here's the bent arm, that's one. If they straighten, that's two, okay? But there's another direction their arm can bend. Not up, not straight, but down in a, in a Kimura type angle, okay? And if they do that, if they roll their wrist all the way over, it starts to become difficult to be hitting uh, the straight arm lock type attack with my legs. Um, you can see they're in a Kimura, but I don't always quite have the leverage to finish this right here. So this is how I usually change it up. I usually switch to a mounted triangle. I'll show you how. A stiff arm, their arm out. So I can hit the bent arm. They straighten. I step over, but they roll it over. They roll it over like this, okay? Now I'm still here, but they've rolled their arm over. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take my hand out, reach behind my leg, and then hold their arm here. So now I've got their wrist behind my back, essentially. Behind my back, I'm holding onto their wrist. It's a switch I make. From here, boom, I step over, they turn it over, so I come behind and I grab it here. Now that I've got the wrist essentially behind my back, all I'm gonna do is include their head in the mix now by stepping over the head. So let's watch how that happens. When I have the wrist here, I'm able to step over the head right here. And you can possibly see already that I'm entering a triangle situation because I've got the head and arm between my legs. Holding onto the wrist, I like to put my heel on the ground. My heel on the ground, and actually leave your toes off the ground. If you put your heel and your toes on the ground, and you don't maybe get the emphasis on the heel pressure that you need. You need pressure downward with your heel because that's what's gonna pick their head up off the ground. If they're trying to keep their head down and be disciplined about their head, I want to be able to scrape underneath and pick it up. I like to have my toes off the ground to do that because when my toes are on the ground, the temptation is sometimes to be a little lazier with where the pressure is and you might slide out around their head, which is not what you want. You want your heel in the, right where their mastoid process is, right where the neck meets the head. You're still holding onto this wrist here and you're gonna drive, and you're gonna come up. You can put your head on the ground for base over here and then cross your legs, okay? Now you're in a mounted triangle setup. From the mounted triangle setup, you'll notice this arm is totally out of the picture. From the mounted triangle setup, I can attack this arm with total impunity. I can also try and finish the mounted triangle. So I'm not gonna go into what you can do from mounted triangle too much, but I do wanna let you know, it's not just about the triangle from there. This other arm is totally exposed and you can start going for Kimura Americana straight arm locks uh, on this arm wrist locks with no ability for this person to defend themselves. So it's just a very helpless position we put them in. So the series, the first little series is the bent arm lock series. Grab the wrist, stiff arm. I'm going for the bent arm lock. Boom, if I get it, that's fantastic. I come here, hips off the ground. If they straighten, we know what to do. Put this inner thigh on their wrist, this inner thigh on their elbow, push down the shoulder and lift. If when I step over, they roll their, their arm over, to a Kimura type position, I'm gonna reach behind and hold their wrist, step over the head with my heel right at the base of the skull, dig underneath, put my head on the ground for base, triangle my legs, and again, maybe the triangle is the finish you get, but maybe some arm attacks on the far side, undefendable uh, by this arm and by this person. The second series of attacks that I do from Kazuri Kasagatami, Broken Scarf Hold, Start with a step over the head. Start with a step over the head. Go looking for a straight arm lock. And let me show you how that, how that happens. On top of my partner here, I like to bug the neck. And what's, what commonly happens is I'm reaching right over their arm to add pressure to 
the chin or the neck, right? I'm bugging them, you know, intentionally causing distress here so that they want to put their hand on my bicep and push it away just a little bit. It's just, hey man, it's just relieving pressure. So this guy's arm is already doing what I want. I start bugging the neck and they start pushing my arm away. Just a little bit of push is all I need and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna bring my head down toward the hip, the far hip, and I'm gonna step over the head. Now, this arm, which had followed my bicep, is straighter probably than they would like, but with my knee underneath their shoulder and my thigh behind their elbow, it's gonna be hard to get it back. So I've got a good position here to attack a straight arm lock. All I really need to do now is to wrap underneath the wrist and to extend here. You notice that when I finish, my hip comes off the ground. So I've stepped over the head. This arm is in trouble over here. I'm gonna catch the wrist like this and extend in. You can't finish this with your hip on the ground. You do need to bring your hip off the ground because you're trying to stay behind the elbow. If I leave my hips on the ground, they'll be too low. So one more time, I will be on top here. They're protect their hand is here because they're just protecting. When I start bugging the neck, they push my bicep at all. I step over the head and I extend the arm here. I've caught the arm just against my chest. The grip on the arm, don't feel like you need to hold the arm. I just chop my thumb to my chest. This is a very strong grip. It's very hard to pull the arm back from, especially with the support of my legs. One under the elbow, one uh, under the shoulder, one behind the elbow. And I'm here. Okay, so that's just a regular straight arm. When you can get that response from your opponent of just reaching at all. Sometimes an opponent won't push on your bicep. They just won't. You can bug the neck and this arm never comes up. They never make that mistake. If that's the case, you can work to get their arm in your armpit. So instead of catching it here for this step over arm bar, if I could catch it in my armpit, this is, you can see, just as good, if not better, of an arm bar. How can I get that in there? Well, if we start from here, you can use your elbow and start trying to force it out. If you can at all force it out and catch it with your leg and put it in your armpit, that's another attack style. So when their arm is safe and it's here, you can start pushing it and trying to move it. But when I cut back with my elbow, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to get it out here and then feed it into my armpit with my leg, the assistance of my leg a little bit. When it's in my armpit, I can most certainly step over and it's a simple arm bar from here because it's in my armpit. That armpit arm bar, even stronger. When I go for the straight arm lock, when I've stepped over the head, it starts a chain of moves. And I'm gonna show you the second move now. One of the common defenses that people do when I do trick them into touching my bicep and then I step over their head, is that they go to catch their hand. They go to catch their hand in their other hand, okay? And on their way to catch their hand, and you have to be ready for this, on their way to catch their hand, I already remember I'm holding their shoulder. So this arm is behind their tricep, is behind their shoulder. When they go to reach, I'm just gonna hold this here in space. When they go to reach, I'm already behind this. So I only need to catch the wrist and feed this arm through. This arm was already here. So I only need to catch the wrist and catch my own wrist to catch an Americana right here. I probably catch the Americana as much or more than I catch the straight arm from this, you know, sort of favorite series of mine. Again, their arms are probably close and defending. I bug the neck, they touch my biceps, so I step over the head. If they go at all to touch their hands together before they catch them, I try to catch their wrists, okay? One thing I find is really helpful is when they go to catch their wrists, I don't just reach for their wrist and push it. I also pull their tricep. So I go here. I kind of hit from both directions. I hit the forearm away. I hit the tricep towards. So they're reaching in and it's these two. And the reason is this. If I make contact here and here with their arm in front of them instead of beside them, if I can do this, their arm is beside them. If their arm's in front of themselves, like here, People have more ability, once I catch this, ugh, to shut it down and stop the Americana and play defense. Okay? I've stepped over the head. If I only touch the arm and I don't get it out of position a little bit on the in initial contact, I find that people can still bring their elbow to their, to their body. If I hit the wrist and hit the tricep a little bit, people are, this isn't the submission, we're not in submission territory now, it doesn't hurt the person, but it brings them to a weakened position from which I can connect my hands and now we'll be catching the submission. 
Okay, so one last time, I bug the neck, they touch my bicep, I step over the head. They go to put their hands together, and it's, it's a little strike. Boop, one and two. One at the wrist, two at the tricep, boop, and then catch my hand, and now I'm able to catch the, the Americana right here. You'll finish it right here. Don't need to take your leg off, don't need to do anything, although you can. But you'll catch it right there with the leg over the head sometimes. And that's the second attack on this second series. The third attack on the step over armbar series from Kazuri Kasagatani is a straight armbar on that arm, on the far arm. I'll show you how it happens, and it's right off the second move. If I bug the neck and they touch my bicep, they say, hey, stop pushing my face, and I catch their arm and step over, and they go to bring their hands together, and I, I start to catch an Americana, one of the defenses to the Americana is they punch their arm straight and they hide it over here. Because now I can't easily catch the Americana. But by putting it over here, they put themselves at risk for this, this uh, razor arm bar or straight arm crush. And I'm going to do this. Support their arm with my arm until I can go with the far side arm. The arm on the side I started from. And roll their elbow out. That's a very important part of the arm crush. I can't just crush it down. Because if my, someone's arm is straight, you try to crush it down. They'll bend it and it'll move in a way that's okay for them. I want to move them in a way that's not okay for them, sadly. So I'm going to reach around, find their elbow, roll their arm over, now reconnect. And I have their tip of their elbow right in the palm of my hand. And now I can crush that into my chest. Now, when I crush this, I can't be expanding my chest because I'll push it against my chest. I want to push it against nothing. So I want my chest to disappear so that it crushes in to a, you know, 12 inches of empty space. Okay. So the third move in this series is, so it follows this way. I touch the neck, they touch the bicep. I step over, they go for, to put their hands together. I catch Americana for a second, but they punch out and they defend their arm. It's hidden over here behind my head. I mean, it's a smart defense. But if I reach in, I find the elbow and I can roll it over, put hand on hand. I like hand on hand, I'm on the tip of my elbow. The other thing is the tip of your elbow, don't leave it way away from the body, jam it under their body. And now you should be able to finish that arm crush right there. And that's the whole series uh, from Kazuri Kesagatami, the one that begins with the step over arm bar. And that's sort of series two from Kazuri Kesagatami. Let's talk about Kesagatami. Kesagatami, regular scar fold, is a position that we used to think of in jiu-jitsu as a useless position. I mean, it, it is just so, such a big disadvantage for them to have the underhook be able to come out the back door and take my back. And we have such, uh, so many fundamental headlock escapes uh, that are so effective. But if you get better at jujitsu to where you can put a headlock on and not immediately see jujitsu escapes, then maybe in those first moments when you've established Kesagatami, you can launch one of these attacks here. Okay. And we've seen it and we've seen it at the highest levels, right? So, um, you know, Josh Barnett catching, um, Dean Lister with the chest choke. That'll be one of the moves that I show you today. So Kesagatami, this is a good Kesagatami. I'd love to hold my leg, have my legs apart for base here and a little bit of weight on my person, okay? Now, from it's very important to know, our first series that we did from Kazuri Kesagatami works just fine from here. Matter of fact, this arm is possibly more defenseless. If I grab the wrist and I can push this down, you have your bent arm lock, you have your straight arm lock. Same as we had from uh, Kazuri Kesagatami, okay? So important to say that we still have the bent and straight arm lock sort of series from here. What we probably don't have is, I don't, it's not gonna be as comfortable to step over uh, with my arm in my own way, it's a triangle. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tight, tight squeeze. But if I catch their arm here, I certainly could take my arm out, go to Kazuri, then step over for the triangle. So the third technique in the bent arm series which was, if they turn over and they catch their arm and step over, you're probably going to want to put yourself back in Kazuri. Because anyway, then that arm over there will be in your evil clutches when you get there. I would step to here, then go here, catch this. And now look, I can play with this arm. It's not hidden underneath. From Kesagatami, when I hold my leg like this, and their arm, when they're trying to figure out what to do with their arm, sometimes one of the places they put it is around my body. 
There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, connecting their hands behind my back and trying to bridge me and then roll me is one of the escapes. So you're gonna see this from good players and it's a good thing for them to do. It's to wrap, wrap this arm around my body. So what happens is when that arm is wrapped around my body and this elbow is say about here, I can actually get a little grip on that elbow with my wrist. If you've seen a heel hook, it's like a heel hook type grip on the elbow. From here, I can connect my hands and sort of hip in. And there's actually a submission there and your partners will tell you that they feel it when you practice it, even though it doesn't look like much. I underhook this arm, underhook this elbow, I can connect my hands or not. I can just hold on to it. And what I'm doing is my grip on the elbow comes up, the elbow comes up, and I'm trying to get the wrist to go down and scoop down like a Kimura. And that's by my hips following that line. My hips are following that line. Okay. And that puts a Kimura on this person. It's a funny angle, but it actually is an effective Kimura when their arms around you to sort of heel hook the elbow and slide underneath like that. If you're having trouble doing that, sometimes it also helps to bring their head closer to the arm you're attacking. Sometimes it happens faster. If your partner is flexible and they can get their head away, sometimes they can withstand it. So, you know, make sure that you're also bringing the head in and you can even just move the head in to finish that move. Another move from Kesagatami is gonna be the head and arm choke. So we're actually not very far from the position we need to be in to catch an arm triangle or a head and arm choke right here like we do sometimes from mount. And it's when this happens, if somebody's framing on my neck and I'm able to push this elbow across, well, there's the space that I need, right? If you've seen this move or haven't seen this move, when I get my arm, my head down beside their arm and I connect to their head, I've now got their arm against this side of their neck and my arm against the other side of their neck. To finish this submission, I'm gonna do this. Keep your head against their head because if there's any space, they might get their arm back. You have won something. You wanna keep your prize. I won their arm trapped against their neck. It's perfect. Keep your head against their head. Now, I'm gonna go belly down beside my opponent. And I can do a few things to make this head and arm choke tighter. One is, with my palm down hand, I can walk my fingers. That's one. Two, is I can sort of assisted walk my fingers. So stop their head and really try to walk that in deeper. And three, I can actually make a little S grip here and use this arm to pull this arm, which is loose. So don't, don't make it both tight. This one's loose and you pull it in deeper, okay? And from here, I'm, I put my toes on the floor and I drive forward off my toes, belly down, you know, you're gonna feel like maybe I want my hips up here, but that's not better. Hips down is better, closes more space. And I'm just driving forward off my toes. If you don't quite yet have the angle, try coming out a little closer to 90 degrees. If you've done the three things to make it tighter, finger walking, assisted finger walking, or the S grip pull, then you will definitely have closed off all the space around the neck. Let's look at it again. From Kesagatami, Somebody starts framing on my neck, they're like, get away from me, like by framing, I'm gonna block the elbow and put my head on this side of their arm, the outside of their arm. Now, head to head, never letting there be a space here for an alley for escape. I'm gonna keep, now the whole goal is to change our body orientation a little bit and to get the space in here tighter. So I'm gonna go belly down, finger walk, assisted finger walk, that's me just keeping the head where it is, jamming it into my bicep or an S grip pull to pull that in. And now belly down, push in off my toes, rock, rock forward. If you need the extra angle, you can try coming out to the side. Try coming around this way. And that's the head and arm choke entering from Kesagatami. Sometimes when you go for a head and arm choke, the opponent turns away. And it's honestly a good defense if somebody was framing and I went for the head and arm choke, I went here. Sometimes they will try to roll away and create space. If they do, that's okay. This arm that's already deep to their neck, I'm gonna bring the wrist bone right to the side of their neck, so just slightly shallower. I'm gonna get my own sleeve, so I'm putting my four fingers into my sleeve, and then this hand's going on this side of the neck. 
Now I've set up an Ezekiel choke. This is enough to choke a person, but just to think positionally and be finishing in a good position. I'm now going to switch my legs so that this knee is behind the back and I'm going to sort of take the back. Okay, so again, this is an Ezekiel off a head and arm from Kesagatami. They frame, I push the arm across, but they sort of like roll, they sort of roll away. And they're trying to not get pinned flat to the mat. It's a fine defense, it's good for them. But what I'm gonna do is get my sleeve here with my wrist, think about where your wrist bone is. Try to put it on the side of their neck here. Now get your sleeve and put this knife hand in here. Don't put in a bent wrist in any direction. You want a straight wrist. You want to put a straight wrist in here. Now I'm just going to put my knee behind the, the back, fold my foot in, because it's a back take now, and start taking the back. You'll finish it about here, if not sooner. And that's the Ezekiel from Kesagatami. Lastly from Kesagatami, we have the diaphragm choke. So the diaphragm choke was famously used by Josh Barnett in one of the Metamorris matches. And it looks like this. I've got the head and the arm, okay? But a lot of times the arm is wrapped around me and you know, we have attacks for this situation. If I can swim under the arm, this starts to, this starts to be the beginning of the setup for me for the diaphragm choke. So I'm actually gonna swim under the arm and I'm gonna try to get it up like against their head. That's really just to help get this arm deeper and I'm gonna connect these hands here. Now it's a matter of putting my weight on their chest and rocking their chest, their chin to their navel. So you're trying to bring a person's chin to their belly button with all your weight on their chest. What happens is you feel in the first moment like you can breathe because what you can do very easily is exhale. So when you do this, you're going to hear, <sighs> they're going to exhale. And then you're going to hear them try to inhale and then realize that they can't inhale or exhale anymore because you've basically paralyzed their diaphragm. You've got all their weight in one place with them folded up. Diaphragm should not work well from there. And that's why it's a chest choke or a diaphragm choke. It's technically not a blood choke, technically a wind choke, I guess, but it's attacking the muscle that brings us our wind, the diaphragm. So it's an interesting move and definitely not a comfortable one. So try not to get caught flat in Kesagatami. It is the place that this happens. So again, a lot of times their arm will be around me. Well, if I can swim the underhook here and try to bring their arm up here, it's because I'm looking for more depth with this arm, more depth, because I want more connection to this side of their neck. So wrap that deep and I'm going to connect these hands. And now I'm going to put my weight through the side of my ribs onto their chest and bring their chin to their navel. Okay. When they're up, you'll hear, and then you'll hear, you know, the person will be unable to get an inhale and then you'll feel a tap. Importantly, when you do this move to somebody and they tap out, what you should do is take your weight off of them. So, so if they tap, don't just let go of their head. Remember that your weight is still stopping them from breathing. It's, it really feels like drowning. It's a very uncomfortable position to be in. So don't, not all at once, don't disappear from them because you, you can imagine bouncing off the diaphragm won't be any good for them either. So just let go, put your hand on the ground and get up. So if you, if you catch somebody, this is the merciful way uh, after they tap to let them get their air back, okay? And it's really important that we not uh, leave our weight on somebody who's tapping out. So you wanna take your weight off, um, you know, not don't bounce off, don't do it crazy suddenly. But when you've caught somebody in this and they tap, you're gonna let go of their head and you're gonna get off their body. That's it for our Kesagatami and Kazuri Kesagatami attacks. Hopefully now you see the difference between Kazuri Kesagatami and Kesagatami. You see the advantages and disadvantages to each position, but you have a lot more attacks from each position. We have two series from Kazuri Kesagatami, from Broken Scarfold. We had one series that started with a bent arm, and we had one series that started with stepping over the head for the straight arm. And then from Kesagatami, we had the bent and straight arm lock still available to us. And then we also had kind of a little shoulder lock we had the head and arm stuff. So the head and arm, push the arm across, catch the head and arm choke, or possibly the Ezekiel. And lastly, we talked about the chest choke. Uh, if you want to see the chest choke done, again, famously, uh, Josh Barnett caught it in Metamorris. So look that up. 
Anyway, thanks for checking out the Monday Brain Dump. These are the techniques that we'll cover this week. I look forward to doing that with you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you guys soon.